Infirmary Media. does is reaches into your brain chemically and locates your happiest memory chemically and then locks onto that emotion and freezes it chemically and then it keeps your happy happy hello 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 and welcome to the selling out show i am one of your hosts david schultz And normally by my side, my partner in crime is Nate Gorzinski, but he is still absent from class, if you will. He is taken ill, and he will be gone for the foreseeable future. Now, last time out, I asked you to send some good vibes his way. Hopefully he did so, but guess what? They're not enough. Send more. Poor guy is laid up in the hospital, and hopefully he will return sooner than later. But in the meanwhile, we are joined by my good pal... Toby Schofield, who was here last episode as well. So he's got some really uh, big shoes to fill, man. This is your second episode of co-hosting duties. Toby, how are you? I'm I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. That's that little twang in there, buddy. Yeah, little little Texan twang. Well, pretty good. I'm pretty. You shouldn't even got a pretty <laughs> mouth. What's up with you, man? How are you? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing great. What did you do today? Let's bore everybody half the death to start the show. Oh, man. Just, you know, work. Okay. You, work. Enough about that. Enough. Yeah, yeah, Enough. Yeah. No more. But I do want to let the listeners know something very special about you. Something that's, that's unique, uh, especially compared to me. I'm a domesticated dad. Hear me roar. But I've got a ball and chain. You, however, my friend, are recently single. I, I am. Freebird. I, ooh, yeah. Recently. Uh... <laughs> divorced you're like even. this is fresh man don't talk about this shit don't pull <laughs> fresh out the wounds, fresh yeah wounds. but you are a free agent man you gotta enjoy you gotta go out there and sow them wild oats right have you been doing that already uh you know i've been out of the dating game mm. for like seven years yeah. so i don't really know what i'm doing anymore and and women are tricky sure are what about apps have you been hopping on any apps kind of swiping this way or that way doing that kind of stuff or what's your plan oh. of attack here or is there no plan of attack well you know i tried some of the apps and Ooh. uh i still don't even know what to say on on those when there's a match mm-hmm. so it's it's one of those awkward i try to fumble my way through and then after two or three messages uh the ladies don't message me back <laughs> oh toby Schofield, the only human being who can fuck up the word hello <laughs> that's right it's oh it's it's pretty pathetic <laughs> and i know it as soon as i start typing i'm like oh no what am i doing can you give me an example of what you're writing that turns these ladies off so fast oh i don't know you don't i don't want to share it, that with us today or? i think it just starts with hello because i'm not i'm not like hey want to hook up hey send me nudes oh. i'm not doing anything crazy like that i'm trying to be a respectful gentleman and well there's your problem that's that's know, the fail right? right there you're supposed to hit him with the one-liners <laughs> and all that stuff right off the bat right i see i don't have any one-liners and the one the one one-liner that i i like i don't think it'll uh it'll go over so well can you share it with me it's a. Uh, <laughs> are you medusa because you make me rock hard oh god <laughs> definitely don't ever use please jesus no good no Christ, but that's no. my favorite that is my favorite <laughs> it's clever funny i don't know where you picked that up from but that's definitely not one that you would use as an icebreaker no no unless you're like oh you like greek mythology yeah i love that movie clash of the titans <laughs> yeah fucking panty dropper right there Right. Well, listen, Toby, all your problems are about to be solved. Thanks to your good old buddy, Dave, over here, because I mentioned, you know, I've I've been tied down for a long time now myself, you know, but back in the day, who baby, I couldn't keep that fucking hot tail off of me, if you know what I mean. And in that whole process, I learned a couple tips. 
two of which I really want to share with you today, and I think they will help you be successful going forward. All right. Okay? So, tip number one. Let's cut right to the chase here. Okay. Never date a girl or go on a date with a girl who owns a snake. Ooh, see, I'm I'm completely good with that because I'm terrified of snakes. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, but but what is the reasoning? I need to is there a reason behind this? Okay, well first off, I know this kind of contradicts your whole um Medusa thing you just threw out there into yeah, the Yeah, no, I'm terrified of snakes. <laughs> worldwide web. Yeah, you're like, well, you make me rock hard and snakes make me scream like a little girl. But um Exactly. But if a girl has a snake, there's going to be some serious daddy issues at play here. Some really deep-rooted stuff that you don't want to touch with a 10-foot pole, if you know what I mean. This snake is a symbol of my independence from daddy. No, no thank you. Plus, unless she's a zookeeper, the only kind of people that own these exotic animals... Well, my mind immediately goes to Walmart memes, you know what I mean? Hiked up spandex, moose knuckles, open-toed fungal feet kind of folk... Oh, no, thank you. And I suppose above everything else, despite how sexy she may in fact be, she's probably got that snake stank, you know? Just a wee bit stinky. I pass each and every time. It's gospel. Yeah. Do snakes stink? I don't know. I try to stay far away from snakes. Me too. Trust you, me. But I, I, (laughs) there's a little bit of a backstory here. And I think if I've, brought it up on the show before but me and nate knew a guy one time with snakes and exotic animals in his house he even had fucking bats whoa yeah whoa is right and he was the creepiest motherfucker like ever but knowing that there was women that were into that and attracted to him and his house did fucking smell like a fucking zoo (laughs) i found that really weird plus they all tend to be goth girls you know what i mean is that your thing do you like the goth chicks is that your style I'm not I'm not real picky right oh. currently. <laughs> no, no, no. I I mean no, I'm not I'm not I'm not against uh, the goth style at all. Okay. All right. Well, but that's good. Not necessarily like looking for goth girls, you know? Yeah. Whatever. Well, the thing is too is like what would possess the girl to even own the the snake to begin with compared to a cat or dog or bird or something. You know what what is that in her mind that makes her think having a snake is uber cool? Yeah. You got to question that. Right. So never, ever, ever date a girl with a snake. Okay. I'm I'm on board with that one so far. Tip number two. When you okay. are on the date, hopefully with a girl that does not own an exotic animal, right. never start drinking until your date arrives. Oh. What, oh, what? what do you mean? Oh, is this tough for uh, you? Is this hard? Yeah, no, yeah, no, no, no. I, I agree. Okay. I agree. And... Per per the norm, I have a I have a backstory for this one as well. Is that one time I met a girl on a website way out of my league, and I mean I I'm a prime piece of, of meat. Everybody knows that's a lie. But anyway, my point being, I'm a little intimidated by meeting her. You know, I'm like I don't know. We we're supposed to meet at a bar, so I showed up about forty five minutes early, and put a few back. By the time she got there, I wasn't the most coherent human being. <sighs> On the face of the earth. So I totally oh, blew man. my chance with this girl. And I mean, she was, whew, you know what I mean? Uh, but after the fact, I checked her out on Facebook or some social media site or something. And she had a boyfriend, not not at the time, but later. And that motherfucker was my clone. <laughs> he looked just like me. I swear, it was like my <laughs> doppelganger. I couldn't believe it. And at that moment, I knew, damn you, alcohol. I blew it. I blew my big chance. Yeah. See, and, and I could see me uh, needing needing something to uh, loosen me up because uh, I get really, really nervous in uh, dating situations. Oh, yeah? Yeah, re- really bad. What happens to you? You turn red, you start giggling, or start... Well, we already know you say weird shit, but I mean, beyond <laughs> all that. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, I, I get real red real easy mm. and uh, really, really uh, shy. Okay. All right, well. Which is weird because I'm a podcaster and that's what I do is talk a lot. Yeah, but you hide behind the veil of the internet. That's true. That's very true. People aren't like directly looking me in the eyes and judging me like they just judge me later. (laughs) Well, a lot of people say, you know, if you're speaking in front of a crowd, imagine them naked. 
To make you feel more comfortable, think of your date as a microphone. Hey, there you go. See? That's that's probably good advice, actually. That's probably the best tip I've given you compared to the other two where I kind of stumbled and fumbled my way through them. Right. <laughs> no. So far, excellent advice. I'm taking it all. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. You got your notebook? Everything? You wrote it all down? Yes, of course. Okay. Well, speaking of red, I'm glad to know that you turn, you know, bright beet red like a cherry or tomato or whatever, because later in the show... I will be trying a Texas staple, a taste of Texas, if you will, a soda by the name of Big Red. Plus, we're going to talk about a movie that I don't know if I love per se, but we want to discuss a little bit because I am a huge fan of Swamp Thing. We will discuss the return of Swamp Thing from 1989. You cool with that, Tobster? Oh, I'm way cool with it. Let's go. Get ready for a kinda, pseudo, maybe, retro movie review. They call me Swamp Thing. You have planned. All right, everybody, as promised, we're here to discuss the return of Swamp Thing based on the comic book character created by Len Wein and Bernie Wrightson in 1971. This flick was released on May 12, 1989 by Lightyear Entertainment with a running time of 88 minutes. It was directed by direct-to-video king Jim Wernowski. The movie starred Heather Locklear, Louis Jordan, Dick Duruk, and Sarah Douglas. The box office for this one? Eh, not so good. It only raked in 274928 bucks, And it was slammed by just about every critic out there except most notably Roger Ebert, who actually gave the film a thumbs up on the Siskel and Ebert show. The movie is a sequel of sorts to the 1982 Wes Craven-directed Swamp Thing flick that also featured Jordan as Anton Arcane and Dick Durek as Swampy. But while that film was intended as a serious take on Swamp Thing, the sequel can only be considered as camp. So what's it about? Ten years after her mother's mysterious death, Abigail Arcane, played by Locklear, tracks down her evil stepfather, Dr. Anton Arcane, for answers. After his death in the first film, Arcane had been resurrected and is conducting gene splicing experiments with his, if you don't mind me saying so, smoking hot assistant, Dr. Lana Zarell, played by Sarah Douglas. The reason for this research? To reverse his aging process. Now, Arcane discovers Abby has the same genetic code as her mother which is the key to his research. So how does Swampy fit in? Well, he was also presumed dead by Arcane after the first film. And when we start this one, he's busy battling one of the monstrous test subjects out in the bog. You see, Swampy was once Dr. Alec Holland, a scientist working on a biorestorative formula until the evil Arcane and his lackeys interfere, which results in Holland's transformation into everyone's favorite muck-encrusted mockery of a man. So the reasons that I wanted to talk about this movie today was Toby is a huge monster fan. I am a massive Swamp Thing fan. And Toby has never seen this film. And as luck would have it, I had recently picked up a copy, a remastered copy of The Return of Swamp Thing, the Blu-ray from NVD Rewind Collection, which is a pretty nice little package. There's not a whole ton of bonus materials on here, but it does have some good interviews, promotional TV clips, and some of you may remember the Greenpeace public service announcements that featured Swamp Thing from the late 80s. So, Tobster, first time viewing the film, what did you think? The quality on this movie, I think that's, it almost feels like that's why they went for a camp uh, kind of style on this on this movie, so they could get away with lower budget kind of things you think so i don't know i mean it just feels like oh if we're being goofy and silly then you know if it's if it doesn't look right yeah, it's just part of it oh okay so they sorry we didn't have the fucking money yeah <laughs> we don't have the money to make a good horror movie so we're gonna try to make some laughs or get some laughs out of you for it i mean i was thinking the writers uh which happen to be neil cuthbert and grant morris might have been enjoying uh their fair share of the devil's lettuce a little wacky tabacky because in this yeah. in this film, it's loaded with one-liners, little zany zips and what have you, that are delivered very poorly, mind you. 
crazy kids, and there's even a parrot. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a lot of stuff like that that doesn't quite make sense. Um, I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of really weird stuff in this movie. There is a lot of zany stuff, and when the movie begins, you, you get a fight scene right off the bat. Swamp oh, thing yeah. fighting a monster. You're like, oh, oh, here we go, baby. This is it. Because a lot of times you don't like it. Or I'm saying you as if I'm, you know, this is your thought, but this is my thought. Hello. I don't like <laughs> it when they, they take forever to cut to the chase. No, you get you get some action right away to be like, okay, I'm in it. I'm in it. Let's go. Yeah. But the disappointing thing after that is there's a cool cover montage for the title credits. Yeah. From the actual Swamp Thing comic books, which were way... Way better than what was put forth in this film. So yeah. you see that? You're like, oh, this is really cool. It's going to pay homage to the source material. Here we go. We had the fight scene. Uh, no. You get Heather Locklear's <laughs> Abby Arcane, who's very erratic, uh, very kooky. She likes to talk to plants. Her co-worker just completely ignores her. While eating a can of soup, mind you, which is condensed soup, which I find odd. So it's like a crazy person thinking another crazy person is, in fact, crazy. Yeah, no, the the whole first part of the movie when she's talking to the plants and stuff, it's uh, it's really convenient for, you know, yeah. the, the love interest that it, it happens eventually. Right, right. <laughs> she would uh, be sympathetic yeah. towards a plant person because, you know, even later on in the film when she first meets Swamp Thing, it's like, oh, hi, how are you? Like she's meeting... I don't know, her accountant. Yeah, she's not terrified at all, like, whatsoever. Even the kids that see uh, Swampy at first, they're terrified until he gives them the thumbs up. Oh, God, the gift that keeps on <laughs> giffing. Right? Isn't that one of the best ones of all time? If anything came out of this movie, and I know some people say gif, but fuck you, I'm saying gif, that gif will last forever. Yes. <laughs> now, I mentioned one-liners or zingers earlier on. There are a few of them in here that definitely uh, <laughs> didn't take a lot of a lot of thought to write. There's a moment where in the intro, one of the guys he's uh, going through the swamp with a machine gun, and they're trying to hunt down moonshiners. And when they see a monster, he immediately yells out, "This guy's coleslaw." Later on, a mercenary <laughs> yells at Swamp Thing, "I'm gonna turn him into guacamole." <laughs> we get it. I'm surprised no one called their weapon a salad shooter. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> this was definitely really piss poor writing combined with bad acting. But I will say this. One character in particular stood out more than the rest, and that was the lead lackey who had a terrible name, but he went by the name of Gun. Two, yeah, two N's. Gun. Gun. But it, again, he had the extra N to give it more emphasis and oomph. <laughs> And this was played by an actor by the name of Joe Segal. Now, Joe Segal, I did a little research on him for this episode, and he really didn't amount to a whole lot in the acting world. But boy, did he play henchmen perfectly. Right. C campy henchmen yes. at that. I was going to say, you know, when you say campy, I, sometimes I get that confused. When I'm like, should I call it schlock or campy? But then when we start talking about the, the humor that's forced on you, it's definitely camp. It feels like the Adam West Batman. You know, it's, it's just got that, like, almost where they want to look at the camera after they say something goofy kind of feel. Kind of break down that fourth wall. Like, <laughs> yeah. I made a funny. Yeah, they're like, are you laughing? Okay, let's go back to the scene. Yeah, or the bam, zap, pow, because there was a lot of fighting in this movie. Swamp Thing, like, wielded a lot of pipes, too, which I thought was weird. Yeah. You know, they never really... Unlike those comics that they showed in the beginning, they never really unwrapped his true potential. And I know there were limits as far as, you know, the whole, uh, again, back with the budget and how much, you know, they could add into the film other than rubbery suits and what have you. So they basically just had to have him punch shit. Right. Yeah. You know? Well, they, I mean, they give, they, they give him his moment where he turns into like a, a s s swampy goo and goes into the, uh, the the drainage system. You know, it's funny you brought that up because when there were those few moments that did tie into the comics in some way, mind you, they weren't done well. But as a diehard Swamp Thing fan, even seeing this movie, I go, oh, yeah, that's, that's from this issue or that or he did this later on in that. You know what I mean? You can still associate it. 
Right. And of course, the way that it was done in the comics was fucking way cooler. Still, you're like, hey, there we go. There, there's something more more like what I enjoy on screen. I'll also have you know, did you ever see the television series? No. No, I didn't. Way better than, than this movie. Whoa. Really? Oh, yeah, because it's an anthology series. So while some things like characters and stuff carry on to the next episodes, you don't need to watch the one before to really understand what's going on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I definitely recommend, even though I didn't even get your opinions on this. Did you enjoy it? Um, yes, I enjoyed it for <laughs> what it was. <laughs> uh, did I think it was a, a, a spot on accurate swamp thing? No, I particularly love the two little boys. They are hilarious because of how bad they are. It's funny you say that because kids ruin everything. In movies oh, and TV, everything. This movie, the the plot is ridiculous. She walks into her little her uh, her uh, floral shop, and she's talking to herself about dating bad guys. And then she goes and looks for her stepdad. He just so happens to be doing these experiments and needs her DNA. Well, that's you know, it's very convenient. It's like it's oh, so convenient. The daughter has the same <laughs> DNA sequence as the mother. Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> Who fucking knew? You know? Which, if it, the thing is, he knew about this daughter this whole time, and if, if he needed this DNA, why didn't he seek her out? That seems like the more logical step to go into this movie instead of she walks in and she's talking to herself and she's like, oh, I gotta go find my stepdad. Yeah. Well, the thing is, just, is, the logic is lost. It's completely lost. Oh, yeah. Which yeah, is no, something it's... that we require now more than ever. You know, I think a lot of times when you see these... Uh, 80s movies uh, or even even earlier like the 70s Superman movies you can kind of suspend reality as a viewer just going oh wow it's so cool to see a superhero on screen it doesn't matter right. how we see it or how he's portrayed it's just cool to have it now we're spoiled rotten yeah no and, and <laughs> there's a lot more thought that goes into our superhero movies now but like yeah. even if you think if you think of like horror movies like uh, the Friday the 13th franchise None of it goes together at all. It's just like, all right, we're doing another Friday the Thirteenth. You know, you know who it is. It's Jason. Hey, oh, he was dead in the last one. I don't know. He's he's alive again, but yeah. he's a zombie. You know, like there's they didn't. I feel like they didn't give much thought into the sequels and and stuff like they used to. Now they're all about franchises and how can we keep this going? Look at Saw. <laughs> you know, right? Uh, they they do try to interconnect them and and. Try their hardest not to have big uh, uh, plot holes and stuff, but yeah, this movie had a lot of plot holes. And, but it was a it was a good time. Like this is something that I would have sat down with the kids and been like, "Let's watch some Swamp Thing," you know. And I think they would have gotten a kick out of it. Huh? I can't show it to my kid yet because there's uh, a couple scenes that I think are a little explicit, and my kid's only seven. So I'm not ready right. for him to like, there's a scene with some uh, Hustler and Playboy magazines in it. Oh, see, that's, but see, yeah, you know, back in the day, like, think of like the Goonies and and some of the other shows, uh, kid show. Well, I, well, I don't know. Don't if get me wrong. Tobster, I, I was definitely uh, introduced to things I should not have seen at an early age. Right. But that's why I'm not playing that game this time around. You know what I mean? If, if I know <laughs> something is a little bit iffy. For, right. for content, I'm like, ah, I'm just going to skip it, you know? Yeah, no, I understand. I understand totally. I just, I felt like that was a funny scene, and it's it's one of those that I feel like could still kind of get brushed over, like, what were they doing looking at magazines? Mm, yeah, that's what they were doing, looking at magazines. It wasn't good housekeeping. We'll, we'll leave it at that. You know, they were right. definitely looking at something. They were afraid of getting caught and everything else. Uh, there's a lovemaking scene. I put it that nicely. Love making going on there. It's like, hey, eat my tuber. Yeah. Whoa. Trip balls and let's, you know, make shit happen. Did he drug her? Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly how it happens in the comic books as well. So if there's anything loyal <laughs> to the source material, it's it's how they they get down and funky, if you know what I mean. Right. Yeah. I was like, did she just trip balls? And yeah. 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 yeah she did. She was hallucinating. Thought he was a hunk and had herself a uh, a BLT, you know, <laughs> <laughs> had herself a good time. But again, that's one of the few things that actually was like, oh, well, that's that's how it gets done in the comic book. So that's cool. 
Right. And honestly, I think my problem with the movie more than anything is I can always put it in its place. Again, with the time frame on which it came out, look at the budget and go, they didn't have a lot of money. They couldn't do this, you know? So I don't mind uh, the monster effects and, and the suits and all that stuff. That doesn't bother me. Right. My issue is with the script because it's a comic book script, not a great one. And when you write a comic book, you're the voice. You don't need actors. So, like, translating a piss-poor script into a film that's acted poorly, well, then you get daytime soap-quality performances, and that's where we're at. Yep. Which sucks, because, like, Anton Arcane, great villain in the comics. In the movie, he's predictable, he's boring, he's stupid. (laughs) <laughs> we, yeah he we pointed that out you know it, nothing makes fucking sense for this fucking guy no no it, it's he is a really boring villain i mean he doesn't really do anything that's like super nasty and the, the whole time he's bossing people around and the, the whole time i was like why are they just listening to him like he's not threatening at all because he can play the organ he's gonna be doing in between periods at the hockey game <laughs> he was pretty good at the organ and then uh his assistant there who i said was smoking hot. I will stand by that. She was actually in Superman 2 back in 1980. Oh, okay. Yeah, she played uh, Ursa, as a matter of fact, one of Zod's minions. So back in the early 80s or that whole decade of the 80s, Sarah Douglas was wowza. She was, I well, I mean, maybe it's because I'm older. I don't know. Because I didn't really realize it at the time. But now I'm, you know, in my 40s. I'm like, ooh, hachi machi. <laughs> Hello, Sarah Douglas. She's not bad. She's not bad. What does she look like now, though? No, no. Don't want. No, you no, don't want to ruin. You don't want to ruin your time capsule. <laughs> nope, no, can do. And then like Heather Locklear, right? Some guys were always like, "I'm into blondes," and she's a perfect blonde. Never did it for me. Still don't. She didn't look so bad in this movie to me. She does happen to grow a at one point in the film a little flower out of her foot. Which kind of led me to wonder, because I'm a creep. I'm like, are those her real feet? Or is that like a stunt double? (laughs) Are those stunt feet? What's going on there? (laughs) Well, you know, I don't think it was as weird of times as it is uh, in 2019. So I bet that's just her feet and she wasn't self-conscious about some creepos. Yeah, but in a lot of commercials and stuff and... Movies, I, I, I'm the weird guy that pays attention to this shit. Like sometimes people's fingernail polish don't match and stuff. And I go, poor editing, you're fired. But they don't. They just use someone else to fill it in because whatever, the, the actor's like, fuck this, I'm going to my trailer. Bring it, bring in the stunt feet, bring in the double, double phalanges, put them over here. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah. I, I wonder if I could write her a letter without getting arrested for being a stalker. <laughs> Hey, um, back in the 80s, were those your feet in Return of Swamp Thing? Can I compare your 1989 feet to the feet you have now in 2019? I I can hear the the (laughs) prison door just slamming behind me. This guy is a fucking weirdo, man. While this may have been the first superhero film to feature a post credit scene... Unless you're a super swampy fan or a B-movie aficionado, this isn't quite the blast you'd expect. There are multiple reasons why it ended up being a flop. So you may just want to skip this one unless you can find it on the cheap. While it's nice to have the movie reissued on a Blu-ray, no matter which way you cut it, eh, still a bomb. Swamp Thing, you know I love you. But your best bet for finding some seriously good Swamp Thing stories will be found in back-issue comic book bins. Time to get our butts up on Out of the Bayou and give some big ups to the sponsors of the Selling Out Show. Plus, hey, Christmas is right around the corner. And just like the jolly fat guy in the red suit, I'm here to give you some coupon codes on some great gifts and stocking stuffers. These companies put out high-quality products that I'm fond of and fuel the podcast that I present to you today. First up, we have Northland Vapor, a one-stop shop for all of your vaping supplies. Their e-juices are dyke tone and artificial sweetener-free, allowing for a rich, flavorful vape. I recommend Blue Raz, which I'm actually enjoying right now. And at Northland, quality doesn't need to be costly, and they still ship to all 50 states. Visit them at northlandvapor.com and use the code SELLINGOUT19 for 19% off your order. 
Next up, we have Spunk Lube. Spunk is an award-winning, non-staining lubricant endorsed by a bevy of professionals in the adult film industry. But why let them have all the fun? You can spice up your sex life today at spunklube.com. Last but not least, big thanks to Alpine Hemp. The CBD revolution has arrived and there's no better place to stock up on pure, organic CBD products than alpinehemp.com. They carry everything you would possibly need from gummies, capsules, tinctures, heck, they even got pet products. Alpine Hemp is your go-to shop for everything CBD, which let me tell you, works for me. And you can save 19% off at checkout by using code SELLINGOUT19. And remember, when you shop with our partners, you're supporting the show. All right, Tobster, you know I love talking about Texas. We seem to do this now on a regular basis. You know, I'm a resident here, unwillingly. I was drag kicking and screaming, but hell, here I am. And with that, I want to try some Texas things. All right. Some items unique to the Lone Star State. Now, one thing that's always kind of perplexed me when I go into a convenience store or what have you is I see this soda pop called uh, Big Red. I've never tried it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I know I'm a Texan, but uh-huh. I'm not a Big Red fan at all. Okay, but let's clarify this. You are not a Big Red fan, but Big Red was created in Texas, is very popular in the southern region of the United States. You just happen to be, you know, that one contrarian. Yeah, I, I'm the one that's uh, unloyal to Texas, I guess. But I love Whataburger, if that counts for anything. Yeah, Whataburger, I've had it. That was one thing, one of the first things I did when I got here, because every fucking Texan you meet is like, you've got to have Whataburger. And then I had, I'm like, yeah, it's okay. It's, uh... You know, and I love Whataburger, Whataburger mm-hmm. but I don't understand that whole thing, like, Oh, when you come through, I've I've been to concerts and stuff, and band people on stage will be like, "Yeah, I just got to Texas. We just had our first Whataburger," and everyone cheers. And I'm like, "It's a burger joint. Like, I don't I don't get it." Yeah, it's okay. I'll put it that way. It's okay. And in many ways, I'm thankful to Whataburger for popping my Texas sized cherry. <laughs> you know, kind of giving me my initiation or yeah, hazing. Yeah, yeah. Into the, that, the that's state. A, that's an. That's a real easy uh, Texan initiation for mm. sure. Just go go hit up a Whataburger and you're like, all right, I've been to Texas. But now this big red business. Okay. Okay, let's just get this out there. You, you're you not endorsing this. You're not making me do this. Nope. This is of I my own volition. I wouldn't force you. You're my friend. Yeah, okay, and you hate this shit. Uh, yeah. And have you ever, did you know there's a big blue also? No, I did not. But um, I, e- let's see how this goes first, huh? <laughs> Before I get into big blue. Now, um, I do have to note I'm also a soda snob. I'm very particular about the brands of soda that I drink. And my favorite brand does happen to have humble origins in Texas as well. That would be Dr. Pepper. I'm a huge Dr. Pepper fan. I like it very, very much. And um, I don't know. What do you say? I crack this bitch open and see how she tastes. Go for it. All right. Let's pop the seal. Okay, it's open. Uh, here I go. <sighs> hmm. The suspense is kind of. I know, me. right? This is the most boring amount of radio. No, like I, I'm ever really heard. interested to see like how you feel. At, like, do you feel like a changed man now? I've taken three sips. Okay. I don't like to to guzzle anything that's got carbonation, which just does. This is, in fact, as I mentioned earlier, soda. Um. I don't know what it tastes like. I really, <laughs> I don't know how to identify it yet. It's not like overpowering with flavor. Right. Mm. Swish it you around know, a little bit in my mouth like a, I'm trying a delicious wine, a vino. Been, mm. I can't even remember the last time I had a Big Red because it's just, I, I'm, ugh, they're just that bad. But th- so many people swear and love Big Red and they love that stupid Big Blue too. Which is equally as hmm. disgusting. You know what this tastes like to me? What is it? Bubble gum. Uh, see, it's been so long, I can't even think of like what Big Red tastes you just, like. You just think of, ugh. That's all you yeah, think of. It's just, just fucking nasty. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. It just makes me want to... 
You know what? Dang. It's not bad. It's not like something I would choose, like on a menu or something. If I went to Whataburger, I wouldn't say, "Oh, give me a big red." Um, but it's not bad. It's just not something I can see people being fanatical about either. Right. So I guess my verdict is uh, meh. <laughs> <laughs> and Dave climbed to the mountains, looked down upon the people, and he said. Meh, 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 meh. <laughs> this soda is only okay. But yeah, definite bubblegum going on here. Probably has a lot of fructose and coloring and poison in it to make it red. Yep, yep, that sounds about right. I know, actually, there's not a lot of ingredients on here. It says carbonated water, high fructose corn syrup. Nailed that one. Natural and artificial flavor. Which, what the fuck is that's like a contradiction right there. It's natural and artificial. Uh, <laughs> red number 40, citric acid and caffeine. The caffeine content is 63 milligrams per 20 floral ounce. And I have no idea how, what those ratios mean, if that's a lot or a little. But I guess it would make sense if it was a lot, right? Because that's why people are so fucking cuckoo for this shit. I, yeah, I guess. I just know that there's a lot of red in it. There's a lot. Of, right. I, I'm, I'm not in front of a mirror. So I can't look at my tongue right now to see exactly how red, but it's only like four or five sips, but still, I bet you this would stain you something fierce. Um, yeah, I guess that's it, man. Uh, you should go out and buy one tomorrow and, and revisit it. See if no. you still hate it with such passion and fury. I'm just going to take your word for it that it's meh, and uh, I'm just going to live happily ever after, not, not yeah. having another big red. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be sitting on a porch someday. The dating app will work. You'll be sitting next to your wife of 50 years on a rocking chair going, I should have went back and tried some Big Red. But now it's too late, honey. Now my time is done. You don't want to be that guy. Don't live with regrets. Go try it. Ooh. But actually, I fucked up because I'm I'm notoriously the cheapest son of a bitch on the face of the earth. And I got this at a uh, convenience store instead of like Walmart or something where I could have gotten a two liter for the same price. Right. So... Would I pay a dollar ninety nine again for this twenty ounce fucking soda? No. You know who I think would like it though? Two little kids. Because again, if it tastes like bubble gum, you can't go wrong. Yeah, I guess so. Well, I'm gonna tell you something right now. In lieu of ever owning a cowboy hat or boots, this is the closest I've ever been to being a Texan. Or or it's it's baby steps. We're we're gonna get you there. You're gonna be proud. You're gonna. Get a, a big uh, Texas tattoo soon, and, you know, you're just going to live the Texan lifestyle soon. Really? Will you brand yeah. me? Will you just fucking get a hot poker and <laughs> brand me in the ass? <laughs> That's what it's going to be. Woo. That's how we do it down here. Oh, boy. Some people just got to be different. And why not? You know, be original. Like Big Red. There's nothing else like it. It tastes great. And there's a lot to be said for being different. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine. And that does it for another installment of the Selling Out Show. I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in. Virtual hugs for all of you. And Toby, my man, my main man, I really appreciate you coming back on and filling in for Nate. It's always a pleasure talking to you, sir. And uh, I'm going to let you tell everybody where they can find you, find some more information about your podcast. But if you're on the show again, that's it. You can't. You can't do that anymore. It's only, oh. it's only twice. So if you just gotta get it out there now, give us your best pitch. Hit us. With okay. It. Okay. So if you like the paranormal, conspiracies, or true crime, but in a satire outlook, go check out my show, Secret Transmission. It's on all the major podcasting platforms and Twitter and Instagram at Secret Transpod. I also do a retro video game review show where we take one old video game, we talk about the history, the gameplay, the music, uh, fun facts, and all kinds of other fun things about one old game. And that's Secret Levels. And it's also on Instagram and Twitter at Secret Levels Pod. Dude, that should be your dating profile. Do you, do you want to you know something funny? What's that? Recently, I gave up on on the uh, the the swiping left or right, so I literally changed my my dating profile to just go check out my podcast. I'm not good at this, uh -huh. <laughs> and I put I put what they were called. Yeah. That's promoting. Have you got any winks, any nudges, any any of that stuff? No, 
to, I'd like to pretend like I'm getting a, a bunch of listeners that are like, man, this hunky, hunky guy. Pretending to him. is fun. Pretending's the best. <laughs> you know, come on now. Uh, same with here, the Selling Out Show. Don't forget, you can find us on all your socials at Selling Out Show. I mean, I think all of them. I'm not hip or cool. You're definitely not going to find us on Tinder. <laughs> You can find me on Tinder. <laughs> there you go. Well, no, no. I am Dave. That is not Nate. It is Toby. And this has been Selling Out. Deep in the heart of Texas Reminds me of the one I love Deep in the heart of Texas Infirmary Media.